Hello my friends and welcome to Open Studio D. This video is part number two of six brushes you must have in your studio. And as I promise, I'm gonna show you how I'm using those six brushes. Here we go! Of course, those six brushes are not the limited brushes or must brushes you, you must have and that's it. You cannot add any other brushes. Of course, you can add any other brushes that you, you feel comfortable or you feel you must have for your style of painting, of course. Let's turn the studio lights on, move some cameras and jump on our canvas so I can show you how I'm using those six brushes. So, do you think we should start it? We just turned the studio lights on, uh, moved some cameras. I have one camera that actually uh, pointed to my canvas so you will see what I'm actually painting on my canvas. I have another camera that is actually pointed to my palette so you will see how I mix the colors and how I use all this mighty six brushes. So I have six brushes. This is my underpainting brush, my fan brush, uh, my second layer brush, then my third layer brush, then my um, fine tune or detailing brush and then final final brush is my liner or regular brush for signature and also for like some small details. So let's, let's jump with the shapes. This will be our first approach. And we're gonna talk about how to make shapes and how to draw in another video probably. show you how at the same time or same way I'm using my uh, fan brush for, for same same purpose of making drawing and a lot of times I'm using my fan brush because I just love because it's the fan brush is very loose brush so I can use and I can so this will be our kind of everything will be going this way we have we have some bushes right here. And this again, this is still still drawing. I'm kind of doing drawing and underpainting at the same time. And this will be our clouds. I may actually put it on actual lower. And I'll show you how to do it. And then this will be our um, our cloud, something like this. Okay. This will be our drawing, and we'll jump right away to. Underpainting. I'm going to use the same. Close this. So it's kind of greenish. And you can see I use a lot of I use a lot of when I do underpainting I I dance. I dance with my brush. And I recommend you don't be you have to be loose in your painting. Now we have this, we have this sharp edge right here, but we're gonna remove it. A tree right here. Some. Then we have something here. And again, for my other painting, I'm using I'm using colors that I'm going to use. I'm going to use for my underpainting, meaning 
the first first uh, for the second layer. So I'm now trying to hit the, hit the, the to get the lights right away. I'm not trying to get the lights right away, or colors right away, or values right away. I see some dark. I see some dark part right part right here. This will be dark part right here in some way. Okay, and then we're gonna use a lot of medium. It's warm, kind of warm here, but we have some problem. So, and our idea is to cover, remove the white canvas and somehow get the This is much darker, so let's this is much darker right now, so let's mark as it this I will get another um, brush my underpainting brush only because I have this is brush number one and not necessarily you have only one brush you should, I recommend having two brushes uh, the same size or I have different different styles but you can have both underpainting brush number one but two brushes the reason why one for dark parts and one, uh, another one for light colors, dark colors and light colors. All right, so I'm gonna use this as my disguise. And let me get, and in the beginning, I'm not using, or try not to use, try not to use white, titanium white. But in this case, I may actually use it, but we will see. Yeah, a lot of medium. I may take just a little bit of titanium white just to lighten, but you can see it. as soon as you apply that titanium white, it's, it's actually the color changes. So that's reason why I really don't like using 
see how loose, I mean, how watery it's, this is. Because it's underpainted. And you just, you just dance, you just dance with your, with your, with your brush and just, you know, don't get locked into what it needs to be, like, exact, exactly. All right, now to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of alizarin because we have to move to, oops, a little bit more than I needed. Let's get a little bit of titanium. So we can get, we can get this. Actually, we can get a little bit more because we can lighter later on. So we get a little bit more. And as you can see, I'm, I'm using a lot of uh, color, I mean paint. And again, I'm not, I'm not drawing, okay? I mean, I'm not trying to get the colors right away. I'm just putting the colors. I'm just putting with my underpainting brush. I'm just putting the colors or paint or actual colors that I'm going to use for next layer. to use titanium white because we won't be able to avoid it because I want to put something underneath my painting and this will be something like this this will be lighter but we're going to use it later on All right, right here I have my uh, my phone with my timer. The reason why, because I want to finish my underpainting uh, no more than 20 minutes. So normally I try to finish in like 15, 15 minutes. Of course it depends on uh, size of the painting, but 12 by 12, no more than no more than 15 minutes. Uh, so we are at, are at 10 minutes right now, okay? So this basically, this is, I'll just put some I lights right here just to see how it will work. Basically, this is it. So now we're moving to brush number two, and brush number two is your fan brush. And this is what we're gonna do. It's still wet, still wet. So what I'm gonna try to do, I'm trying to move, remove some edges, sharp, sharp edges. And also, I'm removing sharp edges to so make sure they're not going to uh, disturb my eyes from uh, from seeing the entire image. So something like this, I'm gonna smooth this. And I'm constantly wiping my brush. Constantly wiping my brush. Okay, of course. Now this is, a little bit too wet. I will normally let it dry um, about, you know, maybe 10 minutes to make sure I'm not, it's actually kind of dry surface and you easily can smooth it. Uh, for example, right here, this is too wet. So I think it's workable, so that's, and again, you have to constantly, constantly. And again, I'm looking, I'm looking at the image, and I'm trying to kind of break the, you know, in, uh, the sharp edges. But also, I'm looking. I can, I can pick up some colors right here. Add it right here. Um, I'm looking. To, I'm looking at my shapes. I'm looking actually at the drawing in general. 
So let's smooth some, pick up some colors right here and smooth it. And I'm constantly wiping, wiping my brush to make sure. Defining the shapes, not only you know removing the sharp edges, but I'm defining my uh, my shapes on the painting. So I make sure I'm fine with everything. This brush is very soft, so we need to clean it, wipe, it, make sure it's it's not removing. I mean, not leaving out uh, sharp. And again, I have another brush, same. A fan brush I can use this is unused. I can use this to remove some. Okay, why I need a dry brush? Because when I move it, I want to pick up I want to pick up that moisture from the canvas and move paint around as I need it because I'm still working on on the shapes all right so this is you know, I'm kind of satisfied with this for right now I'm not gonna put any more details uh, this is cool this is more than what I need maybe here some maybe some if I let me try here So now underpainting is done. The last thing I will, what I will do um, is to put my highlights. And it, as it actually you can see, it's, it's actually still dripping, so I can remove it. But I have highlights right here and on on the sky. So I just for for myself, just to remember uh, the highlights, uh, what I will do, I will probably I will just not probably, but this is what normally will do. I will just define my highlights like this. Uh, they will be darker and then also I just define the lights and I will define right here this will be right here the, the lightest light and right here I just take another brush. This is this is a very soft brush uh, for underpainting, like a fan brush. Uh, just only because I have a little bit more um, medium that I normally put. So I'm gonna pick up some. I'm gonna pick up some mediums on this brush just to remove it because it's gonna dry a little bit fast that I need, faster than I need. Okay, right here and here. This looks like a dog with an eye. <laughs> so let's break it, let's remove it. And here is the sound. Let's move it a little bit right here. Well, you can do it with one same underpainting brush. I just using third one because, yeah, this is this is okay. So I'm satisfied with this. All right, so let's clean our palette, and we're gonna clean it pretty good to make sure we're not contaminated paint in our palette and at the same time we're, we're giving time for our painting to dry 
So we just finished underpainting with brush number one and brush number two, our fan brush. And we're ready to move to next uh, stage of painting uh, with brush number three for the second layer of painting. But before I jump on brush number three for the second layer, I will use my palette knife to finish underpainting. So my underpainting is actually consists of two layers. One is with brush number one and a fan brush, and then when it's dry, and semi-dry to the touch right now. And I will use the palette knife to finish my underpainting with a little bit heavier coat of paint. And you can see I'm using a lot of a lot of paint, a lot of oil. Because I want this, and I'm not mixing too much on my palette because I want to mix the colors on my canvas. Make sure I'm not over mixing. I'm not over mixing on my palette. Now this will be more Again, let's take a little bit more. And as you can see, I've been using relatively Now this I will fix later with my brush. I just want to apply and make sure I have enough oil on my canvas. On my, yes, on the canvas. Now this plane right here is further, so I'm gonna use more of blue. To create the atmosphere and separate from the front plane. And as you can see, it's much faster to apply. And also we need to apply our gel to make sure it's drying faster. Oops. Okay, now let's apply, it's kind of greenish, but light. Something like this.
And then we have the green. Brownish. Let's see if this will work. Let's see if this is good for this. Layer.
Okay, so this is the, the bottom part of underpainting, the finishing under, underpainting, and, and we're gonna work on this section of underpainting on the top. So let's clean our palette.
Okay, we are done with a uh, final coat of underpainting with the palette knife. So what I will do right now is go back to my uh, fan brush and I will break the sharp edges uh, for underpainting and I just move some paint around to make sure I'm, I'm looking at the uh, harmony of the colors, harmony of the, uh, of the shapes and overall to make sure I can move forward. So I'm not going to move forward if my shapes are not right or my colors are not right. So I have to finish under painting and get it right. And then I can move to next layers of painting. And I'm constantly uh, wiping my brush, cleaning my brush, my um, fan brush, to make sure I'm not mixing mud. So we're done with this. I'm going to smooth these, even though I like the uh, I like the variety of colors right here, but I just want to make sure my um, Underpainting is uh, my underpainting is not heavy. It's not. It's a, a good layer of paint, but it's not heavy because I need to build up next layers. And as you can see, I'm actually not only smoothing, but I'm actually moving some paint around, satisfied with the shapes. Completely satisfied with the shapes and um, color harmony. And this is, again, this is underpainting. This is just underpainting, so this is the layers that are gonna work for me for the next layer of, of uh, oil, of paint. And I'm, if you can see, I can pick up color from here and actually move it right here because that's what I need to do. Then I will wipe my brush and move this. Make sure there is no sharp edges at all.
And I think that's bracket the edges right here. I see some heavy layer of oil. So I'm gonna move it to the point when everything is to our satisfaction. So we can move. I think this is enough for underpainting. And we can move to next layer or to brush number three when we start actually applying colors and working with the shapes and working with the harmony and going toward finishing the painting. Uh, this is a good start. I see the, all the shapes, I see the uh, uh, colors. I know my, my sky is a little bit saturated, but it's okay because I'm gonna uh, go down and this underpainting color is gonna work for me as, uh, as a first layer. So I'm satisfied with what I see right now. And what we have to do, we have to give time for this layer to, we're using a lot of gel, but we have, you know, have to give time to, for this, uh, uh, for this layer to dry, or at least uh, start uh, fixing, uh, start drying, so we can start putting next layers. A small touch that I uh, just did, and I turned my camera off and I, I forgot to turn it on, so I apologize. So, but I just did some changes on a, on a painting, on an underpainting. Uh, the cloud that actually was the, the main uh, kind of umbrella of the, of, or the top side of the uh, cloud was right in the dead center, right here. So what I did, I just grabbed the paint from the top and move it down and grab the paint from, this, from the cloud and move it to the left. So the, the center cloud uh, sharpness or the accent will be on one third, and especially on when you're painting two by uh, twelve by twelve or twenty four by twenty four, just square format. Make sure your design is going curvy like this, curve like this, or curve like this, or curve like this. Uh, never on on center, especially on square format. Center is is a killer. All right, so this is a small touch that I uh, just um, did. So we'll let it dry and jump on our next layer with brush number three. This is a day number two, and we're ready to jump uh, to brush number three for the second layer of painting. Just as a reminder, we just finished uh, underpainting, two coats of underpainting. So the first one is a kind of a wash, uh, watercoloring wash uh, underpainting, just to define the sh uh, shapes, define the colors, make sure they have a harmony in, in the painting. Then the second coat of same underpainting I'm, I'm actually doing with my palette knife uh, was a little bit heavier coat uh, of uh, paint. So right now the uh, everything is dry to the touch so we can start putting a second layer uh, with brush number three. So let's get started. You know, I'm using medium, a lot of medium. And I start with my darkest, just the defined darkest part again. some colors okay put some colors and give some more life to to the painting and also cover um, the canvas empty spot I mean like canvas that it's going through Now at this point, I just want to mark uh, a light, lighter, even though this part is dark, it's overexposed or underexposed on, on the painting, so I'll just, I will paint um, 
the way I kind of see or I design basically. So I know here's I'm gonna put some lighter here just to make sure it's reading properly. So I don't like this three shapes rep repetition. So we're going to cover it with, make it solid and put some touches right here. Something like this. And if we need to put uh, sky holes right here, we'll put it later on, not at this stage. All right, so let's move to the lighter part. And we can use the same brush. We're not, I'm not wiping it right now because I know it will be lighter. And I'm looking at the image. And again, I'm looking at the image, but not necessarily have to do same thing what I see in the image. I'm going with what I need for my painting. And and this brush is perfect for this because it's a bristle brush and bristle brush doesn't make those solid, solid shapes, solid strokes it's like everywhere so that's the perfect for this uh for our painting and i'm barely barely touching the canvas actually so this will be our highlight here and actually we're gonna put it a little bit in front and a little bit right here also very important the strokes don't try to put this kind of strokes because it's a grass growing, growing, you know, from the ground up. So you have to make sure not to, uh, not to make any strokes that will, you know, will show opposite. Uh, and make sure they are not sharp edges or sharp edged. Okay, this is lighter. I can see this is much lighter right here and, and why it's lighter because the sun is shooting right here all right so i'm kind of i can put a little bit right here i'm kind of satisfied with this so let's wipe our brush let's add a little bit of kind of green greenish warm and it's actually a warm color i see some warm color right here and here some give some variety of colors on the, you know make sure it's not just a dark spot uh, on your can on your canvas but has some variety it's really hard to see from both cameras actually uh, but I will just I'm showing you just how to use the brushes and then I will show close view so you can see how it looks like in reality all right so I'm satisfied with this part you didn't have to do a lot you need to know where to stop actually painting applying paint if you feel it's a reading it feels like it, it's what you need stop stop right away now i want to work on this part and then on this part so on this part i just want to put a little bit more kind of bluish and darkish color even though it's actually working pretty good I just want to darker this part
just to separate this, the first plane, or plane, all right. And very important very important when you paint trees or forest that is far away the forest is not actually square like this so it has like actually curve so when when it's actually curving it's actually catching a little bit more light it's just look at my hand right here when I turn like this it's actually not catching light from from my ceiling uh, lights because you know it's it's not catching it's basically even some trees are actually going like this so if I turn my hands like this there's no light right here but as soon as I start moving my hands up I'm catching the light right catching more because it's reflecting the sky or the sun uh, on the sunset so the same way we have to paint so if this is darker the top should be lighter and this is exactly what we're going to do we're going to create that curve and you will see that curve actually will work and we actually separate right here and on top of this actually the top will catch light from the cloud so we have to put later on when this will dry we'll actually put some pinkish color um, or violet just on the top to catch this light reflecting from here so all everything when you paint everything is about reflection how the light reflects uh, you know the subjects so how we see actually a tree light hits the tree and then the color of the tree it actually reflects to our eyes so we're reading the color and the shape because we see the shape but the color is actually a reflection same thing when you're painting it's all about reflection it's all about light when you're painting you know uh, in colors uh, for example if you black if you paint black and white or gray scale uh, there's only values uh, but again the values will you know will, will dictate the amount of light reflecting from the subject around and from the sky so it's all about reflection and light all right so I'm kind of satisfied with this maybe a little bit more right here and then later on we'll fix that it's reading I can put actually some sky holes right here as well just to read okay let's work on this part I completely dump that part also very important when you paint any photographs any photographs and this is a way how the iris or the sensor is made on, on, on the cameras your red will be completely removed from the green so when you look at the photograph there is no basically there is no red so you need to know that and you need to compensate don't forget to include that red red colors in your paintings that's very important so I think we're gonna catch some light and then we'll do some touches right here not too much and I'm really enjoying I'm really enjoying I think that my first coat is semi-dry and I actually can I can do the brush stroke that you know the way I'm actually doing it and I really like when I'm painting I really like kind of scrubbing <laughs> really enjoy doing this um, well, of course I can put some some marks like this hard hard edge marks um, you need to know where to put them something like I see right here reflection of Oops, see that? Too much. 
So let's fix it. That will be reflection from from the from the sky. And we actually have to put it's too much already. Yeah. So let's put a little bit darker color. So I'm going to put darker color right here. Oops. And again, don't forget about red. Now here, this is, even if I do this, just darker, this corner, it will work. And then right here. Okay, I think it's too much. I'm just playing. Okay, yeah, I would leave it as it, as it is right now. And jump on my sky. All right, the sky is, and the cloud and skies. So this, this side is oversaturated, and this is good because it's gonna work for my layer that I'm gonna apply right now. It's gonna shine through, which I'm going to dull it down uh, because it's too saturated, so I'm going to put it down a little bit, but this color is going to work for me. And again, I'm working, this is softer brush, but I'm still working on layer number two, with brush number three, even though I grabbed just solid brush. All right, so let's, I see darker right here, so let's, Mix that darker color. In actual I see green and a lot of green and before we apply just put a dot no it's too much let's bring the value up put the green wipe it down no Wipe it down, scrape it, and this is how you and this is how we mix. If you mix something that is not right, don't try to fix it. Scrape it, what I call shave it, <laughs> and try to mix it. Try to mix it again. So and I'm using a lot of gel.
Okay, so it's kind of. I see this this color. I see the, uh, I see blue a uh, green color, but also I see this color right here. So let me see if I can mix it in just a little bit of this. This right color, no. Actually, maybe. Yeah, I like this color much better. So I'm, I will be, I will be removing that this such saturation. So just stay with me because I don't like the too much of saturation. And we're gonna add some some colors to it. So we're gonna pull the colors. What do you call? Pull the right colors. Shape this. Actually, here it's darker here. See some darker here. see much darker like right here and now we can actually to hide some sky holes and now we need to move to something lighter
And, and what we're creating is actually the variety of the colors on it. Make sure our you know, canvas or our painting, especially in the sky, not the same, what I call illustrative color. Uh, it should have a variety of uh, different you know different atmospheric uh, colors uh, shapes uh, it's like mosaic uh, which like work together and and shine so basically at this point we just work with just fine tune that's not that actually that's the first color it's not fine tune but you know to be honest i i I came to my studio this morning and I look at the painting and I said, you know what, it's actually done. And I had to keep going with to show all the brushes. <laughs> um, and it, sometimes it works like that. Um, you didn't have to overdo. I just want to here is like put that in a cloud like this. And it's a good effect when you paint. Talk over here. And again, you just playing with the colors. Uh, you always can remove if something is not working. You want to get something that is pleasing you as a painter and you constantly need to think about it is that okay is is that okay not for the viewers only is that okay for for you as a painter like if you're enjoying it and it's 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 talking to you then you're on the right path if it's not talking to you it's not don't I have to stop scrape it start over uh, it just you know it's it's a feeling that you have to uh, you have to go with like this. I just put this this stroke and I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do is wipe it out. Um, also right here, this is too strong. I'm going to remove, but also. I'm going to add something right here and that would show us um, sky holes. Even though it should be not right now, right now we should concentrate on on shapes and colors and and harmony but I think it's why not right why not but we can why not there is no rules of regulation this you can do of course there, no there's don't get me wrong there is some rules and regulation this is you can do this is something you can do and this is something you can do you have to avoid but in general in general, the main rule is you. I just, I know the sky right here is darker. So what we'll do, we'll just blend to make sure, oops, too much. But I just want to create here the atmospheric. And what I will do now makes it lighter. And I will fix this. Just to blend. Let's 
see some light right here, so I can put a wire. Okay. Now we're going to our brush number five, and it's fine-tuned brush. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some highlights on my cloud right here. Uh, Good, maybe a little bit of rim here, maybe it's just small, small touches. Because I think, to be honest, the painting is working for me. Uh, I don't want to mess up. I don't want to put too much. So let's jump on brush number five. So before we do that, let's clean our canvas. Not the canvas, but medium uh, gel. Make sure we're not contaminating it because right now it's really very important. I'm going to work on the lightest part and we don't want to really contaminate it. Okay. And it's going to be right here. My laser and crimson. 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 Can pronounce that. And then a little bit of this. And a little bit of blue and let's see what we can what we can get this will be our lightest part so lightest part will be I see some we can make sure it's not oversaturating it make sure we're not over yeah, I have to keep watch it. You have to really watch it. So I have a kind of overexposed right here, and this is what I will do. Just overexpose so it's this will be my focal point right here. Maybe not that much. deeper now this part will be all this part just a little bit and then
And I have to pay really pay attention to what you're doing. So you can max, mess up everything. The shadows right here. Darker. Yeah, this is uh, like really like dirty color. And as you can see, I'm using my fine brush, fine tune brush as, I don't like this color here. And that's what I said. Let's we just put too much. Just the highlights on on the trees right here, so it's catching. So it's catching the light um, in the scene. And we'll separate <sighs> no stop. So let's fix that. Good that we have the paint left. 
Okay, and the same time, instead of making sky holes right here, which we can make, uh, we can make actually a small transition. So tree the branches. Something like that. And also, can make the blue. Darker. And also So I'm just trying to make that curve on these trees and then just touches of, even touches, small touches of blue to make sure, that now this is bugging me, so this other one right here. This maybe. So you're just looking for harmony of your painting. Just the harmony of your painting. And this is what you call fine tune with a fine tune brush because it's just small touches that you need to make. And again. Make sure you're not over overdoing it. Just a little bit everywhere. Uh, I'm gonna put my darkest, darkest, darkest will be right here. There is no. No light. Coming. And small touches, I see some like that's catching light right here, right here, and the reflection from here. And, <clears throat> and I can see some reflections right here, be here a little bit, not too much. 
and a little bit here indication that's it and final part is brush number six and this is signature brush signature brush or we can do some highlights or really tiny small indication like like this like this here And then finally, and finally, signature. If you put the signature right here, the painting will be your balance. It's gonna, I'm gonna fall into the right. So we have a huge mass right here. We have a mass right here, but it's actually pointing this way. So if you put the signature on this side, it's gonna, I mean, it's gonna fall to the right. So the signature needs to be on this side, right here, it's just to balance. And we're creating actually kind of triangle point okay so signature will be and the signature will be light something something like this again very important what it's too light and uh, it's too light just kill it. And that's it. So this is six brushes that I recommend, must have in your studio and how to use them. Have fun. Yeah.